Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be doing another unboxing. Now this unboxing is very, very exciting because these are two models that are pretty rare, especially this one. I don't think any of you will know what this aircraft is. Uh, you can start guessing now, leave it in the comments what you think this one is. This one, I'm sure a lot of you will probably uh, have uh, some guesses towards what this one is, uh, but this one definitely not. These are both kind of rare. This one, it's not really rare at the moment, but this will, I can I can promise you, this one will become rare in the future. But without further ado, I guess we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, I think I'm going to start with the less rare one, this one. Keep you waiting for the reveal of this one. I'm going to put this one off to the side now, and we're going to unbox this one first. I've waited a pretty long time for this one and I'm very, very excited to kind of unbox this. Um, it's a plane I've wanted for a very, very long time. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to have a look at this. Okay, and with the box finally open, we can now reveal what the model is. And so the model is the NG models, Boeing 787-9 from ANA in the R2-D2 Star Wars livery. Now, the reason I say this model will become rare, uh, it's not only because it's an amazing model, but this model is actually technically illegal. This is a limited edition model. Uh, they never actually released it in any of their main releases where they publicly announce what planes they're gonna release. And the reason they did that is because, as I said, this model is technically illegal. Now, NG, it is confirmed that NG do not have the correct licensing to release this model. <laughs> Of course, Star Wars is owned by Lucasfilm, and Lucasfilm is owned by Disney now, and NG do not have the licensing from Disney to release this model. We've seen this in other cases as well, like when NG released the United Harat here, uh, 757s for United. NG didn't actually have the correct licensing um, from the artists that produced those liveries to release those models. And so although illegal kind of seems like a strong word to use, technically I can't really think of any other word to use. So a and overall they do have this livery, they also have two other Star Wars liveries as well. So they have three in total as I said, they have this one which is the 787-9 uh, in the R2-D2 livery. They then also have the C-3PO livery on the Boeing 777-2. And they also have the BB-8 livery on the Boeing 777-300. I've been meaning to get the BB-8 livery for quite some time because of course that is on the Boeing 777-300 and the 777-300 did actually come to Dulles uh, for quite some time. Uh, the BB-8 livery um, has come to Dulles uh, various times in the past. And now the ANA have actually um, kind of downgraded their service to the 787-9 on the Dallas route. It is possible that in the future we may see this aircraft at Washington Dallas as well. So I can actually include this model into my Dallas updates and it be realistic. Then there's the C-3PO livery on the Boeing 777-200 and I believe ANA only really use their Boeing 777-200s on their kind of Asian routes. And so there's no real way that we'll get the um, C-3PO livery in the see at all. But focusing on this model now and we know that NG love to uh, go ham on their boxes and create some amazing designs and this one is of course no exception. As you can see we've kind of got the R2-D2 design, uh, some pieces of the design in the background of the box all dotted around the box. You can see on the front here we've got the actual clip art of the aircraft there. I've got the titles up here, the Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, uh, the airline which is ANA, uh, NG models down there. And then the side of the box also has these kind of similar designs and it has the uh, clip art of the aircraft there, uh, Dreamliner up the top there, NG, uh, registration, everything like that. And then this side is the same except for the clip art, it's just got the uh, airline logo on there and it's pretty much the same all the way around the box. On the back here it's pretty much the same as the front, we've just got all this legal information down here which will probably be interesting. I don't know if it says anything about um, the livery being non-licensed. It's it's odd that they've got the uh, Boeing license down here, but they don't have the Disney license, which is kind of ironic. But without further ado, I guess we're just going to go ahead and open this box. Now, the actual unboxing is just going to be the same as any other NG787 unboxing. As you can see, we've just got the same kind of design of packaging here. We've got the plastic piece on top take that off and then we've got the polystyrene here with another plastic piece on the bottom that we can move out the way and there sat inside its little cradle we have the model. 
and then just taking the model out of its cradle here we've got the model and it is in perfect condition so ANA are actually one of the world's leading airlines in terms of the amount of 787s that they do actually have they currently have 36 787-9s with a further 12 on order of course only one is painted into this uh, special Star Wars livery the rest are all regular 787-9s and so starting off the front here we've got the uh, classic 787 nose I think NG does do the best 787 out of uh, all the manufacturers although um, the others aren't that bad at all and um, Gemini jets also do a very good job and Phoenix do a pretty good job as well except I would put them kind of like last but they are still pretty good we've got the cockpit windows here uh, with the L1 door here uh, the forward landing gear here and then we've got all of these R2D2 markings of course it's kind of reminiscent of R2D2 kind of like lying down on his side I believe kind of like the front of R2-D2 is kind of like the top here as you can see it's kind of all warped because of course it's suited to fit a 787 but um, uh, roughly kind of like the front that's kind of like one of his sensors on the top there um, and then you've got to kind of got that's the line there that's his kind of like tilting head uh, kind of piece at the top there and then this is kind of his main body I guess you could say but as I said it's all really warped and it's not exact but there we go then moving down to more of the center of the aircraft here we've got the L2 door here um, of course this is where kind of like premium economy is going on to economy at the back here uh, we've got these engines here uh, with the wings here and um, then we've got the Wi-Fi box on the top here taking a look at the underbelly of the aircraft everything looks good we've got more of that R2D2 marking um, on the bottom there with the uh, main landing gear as well everything looks absolutely perfect of course we've got the registration on the wings which is a very European and Asian thing to do and then on the other side we've got that Japanese dot and then last but not least moving on to the rear of the aircraft here we've got the massive massive Star Wars titles here uh, then we've got a lot of the kind of like legal information um, on the actual aircraft just underneath the Star Wars liver I don't know if it'll focus there but um, yeah as you can see we've got a lot of the uh, legal information under there uh, that's ANA's legal information of course that's not NG's the irony of this model is so poetic the fact that there's a licensing disclaimer on the livery when NG don't even have the licensing to release this model is just kind of it's just kind of poetic in a way but then here at the back here we've got of course all the uh, airlines info we've got ANA there we've got inspiration of Japan which is their logo uh, the registration with the Japanese flag there uh, Dreamliner and then the ANA kind of like tail here with the APU and the rear stabilizers here uh, yeah it all looks pretty good overall this is an absolutely amazing model I would love to see NG release the United 737-800 in the Star Wars livery that would be absolutely great but yeah this model is absolutely amazing of course I'm a massive fan of Star Wars um, I actually just finished watching the latest episode of The Mandalorian so, so that kind of goes hand in hand with this unboxing kind of put me in the mood and then of course the 787-9 the mold on this model is absolutely perfect so everything's just absolutely amazing uh, to my eye of course everything on the livery side of things looks good um, I'm not 100% sure I haven't looked at this livery enough in real life to kind of know uh, all the defects on this model but um, from what I've seen it's absolutely perfect I really really like this model and it's great to add it to my collection I just got to get those other two Star Wars ANA uh, liveries now and then I just got to get the United one and we'll be fully Star Wars livery set and then sadly next we're gonna move away from the whole Star Wars theme and we're gonna move to a very different kind of theme but here we have another model uh, this is another very very rare one I don't think any of you will kind of predict what this model is and so I've opened the box now so I got this model a while ago from eBay it was pretty expensive it's one of the most expensive models I've ever bought and ironically I don't really need it for any of the airports um, I'm currently doing I just got it because um, I've always I uh, like the look of this model I've always liked the look of this aircraft and I really really wanted to get it and so taking the model out of the box this one is the United States Coast Guard C-130 this particular C-130 is the C-130H uh, the United States Coast Guard does also have the J variants of the C-130 overall they have 26 C-130s in their fleet and these serve as the uh, long-range search and rescue aircraft 
Of course, as the uh, Coast Guard are a branch of the military, I guess you could say, um, it comes in this Gemini Max box, of course, with the kind of like the metal pattern around the box instead of the blue. And I believe this is actually quite an old model. Yeah, 2004. This is a very, very old model, um, but I'm very, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to opening this one. And I'm already disappointed when looking inside here. Um, some of the props are bent. That's a very big shame, of course, because I did actually spend a very large amount of money on this aircraft, but oh well, we'll see if that's uh, fixable. If not, I'll probably have to see if I can get a refund. But opening up the model now. Yeah, this one, uh, okay. So the actual model isn't broken, just the um, props are bent. Okay, so here we have the model. Um, as you can see, uh, some of the props are bent. I mean, look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at that. That is uh, not very good. The guy I bought this from, um, he's an Australian uh, seller, I think, on eBay. Um, he's also the same guy I got one of my um, interactive series um, aircraft from. He's been pretty reliable so far, but this has really kind of let him down. There is no way this would have happened in the mail, uh, the way they seal these aircraft in the box. Uh, there's absolutely no way this would have happened in the mail, so of course this would have happened um, pre-postage. Uh, it does look fixable, um, I'm just hoping when I bend them back into place that they don't snap off. I'm going to try and do that as carefully as possible and hopefully um, it doesn't break even further. I think now I'm going to kind of review and go over the aircraft in detail uh, without looking at the uh, props. So for now, if you pretend that the props are all in okay condition, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at this model. So starting off at the front here, we've got the uh, C-130 nose. Of course, we've got all these windows of the C-130. If you've ever been in a cockpit of a C-130, I actually went in a cockpit of a C-130 when I went to Fairford, I believe, in 2014 or 15, um, and I sat in the uh, pilot seat up here, and the windows are kind of... It, it's weird sitting in a C-130 because the windows are everywhere. You can see so much out of these windows. You can see this there's even windows kind of like below uh, the uh, eye line down here, kind of by your feet down here. And then of course you've got the eyebrows up here. Then you've got this uh, black nose. A lot of these C-130s I see have this kind of black nose. I'm not sure why the nose is black on the C-130. And then moving back here, we've got the forward landing gear here. That does not roll, except the main landing gear does roll. And then we've got the uh, United States Coast Guard kind of color scheme here with this kind of like reddish orange color and the blue and then this little emblem here then of course back here we've got the main landing gear which does roll uh, then we've got the united states coast guard kind of titles up there uh, with the doors at the back there that do not open um, i know that my royal netherlands air force c-130 the doors actually do open which is pretty good um, and then on the underside of the wing there we've got the uh, uh the fuel kind of tanks extra fuel tanks on the uh, wing there with the united states uh kind of like military logo underneath there um, and then some extra kind of uh, uscg markings and some orange markings as well and then up here on the uh, tail of course we've got more of the uh, orange kind of markings with the uh, more of the uh, military markings on the back here and honestly when not looking at the bent props uh, this is a really really nice model so as i did say uh, the united states coast guard do have 26 of these c-130s um, i'm not sure about retirement plans for these of course the c-130s are aging uh, they're getting very very old at this point i know that the royal air force are actually planning on retiring all of their c-130s by 2024 and then replacing them with the a400ms the new airbus kind of replacement for the c-130 the c-130 isn't actually the only aircraft the united states coast guard um, own they also have uh, two uh, c-37s which i'm sure Sure you'll probably know from uh, some NG releases they have released them in 1 to 200 scale and also Gemini Jets have announced them in their future releases those are the Gulf Streams they're only called C-37s because they are a branch of the military and when an aircraft goes into the military it's got to have a, a militarized name and so in the United States Coast Guard they are called C-37s they have two of them uh, one slightly older that was brought into the United States Coast Guard in 1998 and then one that was brought in in 2017 they then also have 14 of the C-27s. Uh, they then also have 18 of the C-144s. Uh, and then they have two types of helicopters. They have 42 
uh, Jayhawk MH60Ts. And then they have a further 98 Dolphin MH65 D and E variants. And yeah, the reason why I got this is just because it's such an amazing aircraft. Um, I saw this become available on eBay and I just thought, I've got to have this. It's an amazing aircraft and um, it's very rare to find a C-130 that looks this good. Of course, 99% of all the C-130s around the world are in those boring kind of gray kind of military color schemes. But there are a few exceptions like this one, like the blue um, angels, uh, Fat Albert, I believe it's called. Then there's also some livery. I, I forget what one it is that Gemini Jets did release a while back. Um, I'm not sure what the name of the livery is. I'll have it on the screen now, but they also did release that one. And I really do like the C-130. I think minus uh, the A400M, the C-130 is probably one of my favorite kind of military cargo aircraft. I just love how like indestructible these aircraft are. And they've done so many things to this aircraft over the years. There's some photos of when they can actually put the flaps on these aircraft. I believe 90 degrees, which is insane. They also have in multiple occasions strapped um, rockets to the back of this aircraft to kind of give it a boost on takeoff. They've also tried to land this on an aircraft carrier and one very recently did actually collide when refueling with a fighter aircraft and one actually um, had a mid-air collision and then came around and landed in a field and I believe they put it back together and it's flying again which is absolutely insane. It's one of the only aircraft that can have a full-on crash and then they'll have it back in the air like a week later. It's just a really cool aircraft and I'm very very glad I have it in my collection. And with that being said, uh, that does conclude this unboxing. These are two very, very cool aircraft. I can't wait to have that um, R2-D2 aircraft in some of my Washington Dallas updates. I'm also working on getting a Korean and ANA 787-9 um, in the regular liveries as well. They are available. I know where to get them. I just am trying to build up the money to get them um, and then I'll probably buy them. And I may get some more C-130s in the future, but I'm not sure. I might try and get some more um, A400s when, of course, they come out because I do prefer the A400 over the C-130. It would be so cool to see an A400 in some crazy livery like this one. So far, I think they're all grey, which is kind of boring. Maybe the UK should take a leaf out of America's book and kind of assign some A400s to some Coast Guard roles and paint them in some wacky kind of color scheme like this one. But apart from that, that does conclude this unboxing. I hope you did enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.